Hello everyone, today let's see about an important metabolic disease affecting cerebrum that is polyencephalomalacia or cerebrocortical necrosis. Let's move to the case. Observe the clinical signs shown by this animal in this video. It is showing nystagmus and opisthotonus. The feeding behavior is normal. It also showed other signs like tremors, staggering gait, ataxia, blindness, circling. I have given a clue here. All the vital signs are normal. These vital signs will help to differentiate from other diseases which produce similar signs as that of PM. So what's your guess based on the case history whether it is tetanus or meningitis or polyencephalomalacia or vitamin A deficiency or listeriosis. In tetanus there will be locked jaw, raised tail, erected ears and there will be stiffness of limbs. In meningitis there will be increase in the heart rate but in PEM all vital signs are normal including the heart rate. In vitamin A deficiency uh, it's more common in the newborn animals and this PEM occurs in animals which are in grain diet. Nystagmus and circling may confuse you with listeriosis. In listeriosis there will be facial nerve paralysis and it shows signs like partial closure of lips, eyelids and drooping ears. What causes this PEM? This PEM is a description of cerebral injury affecting predominantly the grey matter. There are two important etiologies. The first one is time in inadequacy and the second one is sulphur toxicity. This elemental sulphur in the rumen is metabolized, by, metabolized in two pathways. First, the sulphate is reduced to sulphide by the rumen microbes and the sulphide is either incorporated into sulphur containing compounds like cysteine and methionine or this sulphide combines with H plus ion in the rumen and forms hydrogen sulphide and it's a toxic agent. Time in inadequacy occurs due to one of the following causes. First one is grain diet and lower of age diet. This high grain diet will enhance the proliferation or multiplication of thiamine producing, thiaminase producing bacteria. This thiaminase destroys the thiamine and causes deficiency of thiamine. Next one is the antioxidant drug amprolium. It is a thiamine antimetabolite. Next one is impaired absorption or phosphorylation of thiamine and thiamine inhibitors in the tissues of host. Lack of sufficient apoenzyme or coenzyme apoenzyme binding for thiamine dependent systems and increased metabolic demand for thiamine in the absence of increased supply. The common thiaminase producing bacteria in the rumen and intestine are Bacillus thiaminolyticus and Clostridium sporogenes and it produces type 1 and type B thiaminases. Thiaminase type 1 is present in the rhizomes of bracken fern and hot tail. Bracken fern when fed in excess quantities will also cause hill hematuria. Here is the pathogenesis. This thiamine has many important functions in the body. It will help the body cells to convert the carbohydrate into energy. It's an important, it plays an important role in the pyruvate metabolism and conduction of nerve signals. And this deficiency of thiamine results in increase in the blood pyruvate concentrations and depression of erythrocyte transketolase. This erythrocyte transketolase is an enzyme, in, is a rate limiting enzyme in the pentose phosphate pathway. The brain of the young animals are mainly dependent or greatly dependent on the pentose pathway phosphate pathway for their energy. So when the deficiency of thiamine occurs, it adversely affects the carbohydrate metabolism in the cerebral cortex and leads to cerebral edema which is mainly due to the reduction in the ATP production. Next is sulfur induced PEM. It is very common in young cattle that is 6 to 18 months old cattle when they are fed with high sulfur diets. This calcium sulfate is an inorganic sulfate salt which is usually added to the ration to control the total daily intake in animals. It also causes PEM. When high sulfur diet is fed to animals for a period of 15 to 30 days, it may cause it may result in seasonal outbreak, and this is very risky when the water is a source of sulfur. And water containing magnesium sulfate, that is dip water, and the sodium sulfate will also cause PEM. As per the NRC recommendation. The sulfur in the diet should be less than 0.3% and 0.4% 
is the maximum tolerated dose. So what's the optimum sulfate level? So water for the livestock should contain less than 500 ppm sulfate and the maximum safe level is 1000 ppm and the maximum tolerated dose is 4000 ppm. Excessive sulfate and low copper adversely affects the thiamine status and contributes to the PEM in cattle. And here are the sources of sulfur. Ammonium sulfate is used as a urinary acidifier also cause PEM and alfalfa feed which is sprayed with 35% of elemental sulfur and this copper toxicity have been associated with sulfur toxicity in Malaysia. This copper toxicity will decrease the hepatic function and increases the plasma concentrations of sulfur containing amino acid and predisposes to PEM. The major dietary sources are inorganic salts that is inorganic sulfate salts are fed as acidogenic diets to prevent milk fever around the time of parturition. The byproducts of grain processing are high in sulfur. They are uh, distilled grains, corn gluten meal, brewer's grain, molasses, beet pulp and alfalfa hay. Temporary deprivation of feed and water for 24 to 36 hours and sudden exposure to water containing high amount of sulfate salt will predispose the animal to PEM. And here is a pathogenesis how the sulfur cause PEM. This hydrogen sulfide in the rumen, acidic rumen increases the rumen gas curve concentrations of hydrogen sulfide. This hydrogen sulfide is absorbed through the rumen wall and reaches the liver through the portal circulation and gets detoxified by oxidation to sulfate. On the other way, the portion of erected gas is absorbed across the alveolar membrane and reaches the pulmonary capillaries and causes hypoxia. So this way, by means of erectation, it efficiently bypasses the detoxification before it reaches the brain. This picture shows what I explained in the previous slide. This sulfate is reduced to sulfide and it combines with H plus ions to form the hydrogen sulfide gas. And this gas, if the 60% of the rumen gas that is erected is inhaled, this is the main route through which this hydrogen sulfide reaches the systemic circulation and reaches the brain cells and cause damage and ultimately leads to polioencephalomalacia. Clinical signs in cattle includes self, sudden onset of blindness, many reflexes absent in case of acute cases, and walking aimlessly, ataxia, muscle tremors, champing of jaws and frothy salivation. Head pressing will be there which is nothing but the compulsive forward walking stopped by a wall and in recommended animals we can observe opistotonus, nystagmus, tonic clonic convulsions and all the vital signs are normal and feeding habit and defecation also normal. Older cows will survive for several days compared to the young cows because the young ruminants are more susceptible. In case of sheep, it wanders aimlessly in circles or stand motionless, blind, opistotonus, hyperesthesia, extension of four limbs, and tonic clonic convulsions. Unilateral localizing signs are common in case of sheep. That is, if a uh, right side is affected, the animal will start to circle in the right side, and the deviation of head is also towards the right side. Here is the paddling of limbs. And when you try to roll the animal to the other side, it always tries to get back to the other side, the same side. In this video, you could observe that many reflex is absent. In this picture, you could appreciate opistotonus and head pressing, which is nothing but a progressive forward walking. And in goats, the early signs is separation from the flock and elevation of head excitability. Blindness may be there, extreme opistotonus, severe extensor rigidity, mistake miss. In case of sulfur-induced PEM, 
there will be depression, central blindness and head pressing but we can't observe any hyperesthesia, nystagmus and opisthotonus. And in rumen contents there will be strong hydrogen sulphide gas odor which will be like rotten egg smell. This nystagmus is a classical sign in PEM. Here is the vertical nystagmus. And the diagnosis is based on clinical signs, clinical pathology, necropsy findings, sulfur level in the feed and water and hydrogen sulfide odor from the rumen contents. The clinical pathology, thiamine inadequacy PEM. In animals, thiamine is present as free thiamine, thiamine monophosphate, thiamine diphosphate or thiamine pyrophosphate and thiamine triphosphate. This thiamine pyrophosphate is the active form of thiamine. It is very difficult to interpret the thiamine concentrations because of the possibility of thiamine on rocks inducing deficiency even when the blood thiamine levels are normal. So the normal reference range is 75 to 185 nanomoles per litre in case of sheep and cattle and in, in deficiency of thiamine it will be less than 50 nanomoles per litre and in goats it is 72 to 178 nanomoles per litre and in PEM it will be less than 66 nanomoles per liter and low thiamine concentrations are observed in brain, liver and heart. Blood pyruvate and lactate levels are high as the pyruvate is not metabolized and pyruvate kinase decreases. The measurement of transketolase activity of erythrocytes is an important one. It's a biological assay and it should be run soon after the blood collection and is not widely available. This TPP effect in the PEM is greater than 70 to 80 percentage and the normal range is 30 to 50 percentage. Increased TPP effect, decreased erythrocyte transketolase activity, decreased thiamine concentrations indicates PEM. And the hemogram is normal and the cerebrospinal pressure increases from 12 to 16 cm H2O to 22 to 35 and the protein in the CFSF is also increased. And there will be slight to severe pleocytosis and it will contain more number of monocytes and phagocytes. In case of sulfur induced PEM, it is essential to measure the ruminal hydrogen sulfide gas. The changes in the rumen gas gap concent sulfide concentrations are greater than the changes in the rumen fluid concentration. To measure the hydrogen sulfide gas, Clip the air in the left paralumbar fossa and prepare it aseptically. Introduce a sterile 18 gauge needle into the gas cap of rumen and connect the needle to the calibrated hydrogen sulfide gas detector. The increase in the hydrogen sulfide is 100 times more than in the normal animals. And the urine thiosulfate concentration is a useful diagnostic tool. This thiosulfate is a result of incomplete oxidation or partial reduction of sulfate. And necropsy findings, we can find diffuse cerebral edema with compression, gyral flattening, yellow discoloration of dorsal cortical gyri and coning of cerebrum which is nothing but cerebrum is pushed into the foramen magnum and autofluorescence of a freshly cut surface of cerebral cortex when placed under the UV light. Laminar necrosis of cerebral cortical gray matter. In this picture you could see the autofluorescence of cerebral cortex when it is placed under the UV light. Treatment is very simple. Give administer thiamine hydrochloride 10 mg per kg body weight slow IV and repeat it for every 3 hours. The treatment is ineffective in advanced cases and there is no improvement in animals which are affected with the diffuse cortical and subcortical necrosis. And we can prefer the oral route. When we, sus when we suspect that uh, thiaminases is in the alimentary tract, the dose rate is 1 gram in case of lambs and kids and 5 gram in calves as a drench. This thiamine propyl disulfide depresses the thiaminase activity. And in case of severe acute cerebral edema, we can use 20% mannitol at the dose rate of 0.25 to 1 gram per kg body weight IV. In case of slow response, you can collect the rumen fluid from the animals which are fed with roughage and give to the affected animal. Control 
the roughage feeding should be at the rate of 1.5 kg per 100 kg body weight and thiamine can be included in the diet at the rate of 3 mg per kg dry matter. Remove the amprolium from the diet and it decrease the overall sulfate intake in the ration. Restrict access to pastures containing high sulfur content. And in case of thiamine inadequacy, you can give 5 to 10 mg thiamine per kg dry matter. And differential diagnosis in case of cattle, acute lead poisoning. There will be rumen stasis. In case of PEM, the rumen motility is normal. Subacute lead poisoning, there will be weak palpebral reflexes. In case of hypovitaminosis A, there will be dilated and fixed pupils. Histophilus omni meningo encephalitis, there will be enlarged joints, depression with eyes closed, and marked changes in the hemogram. In case of PEM, the hemogram is normal. In sheep, enterotoxemia, which is caused by Clostridium perfringens type D, there will be glucose, glycosuria. It occurs several days after the grain diet, but PEM occurs several weeks after the grain diet. In pregnancy toxemia, there will be stargazing poster and focal symmetric encephalomalacia and lead poisoning, there will be rumen stasis. Goat, similar to that of sheep, and we have to differentiate from placental overdose. Thank you so much for watching the video.